at the end of the last video, we talked about the .env file, and I showed you where it stored the database credentials and our default site URL. During the installation process from the command line, this .env file was created and populated automatically for us. But let's talk about what this file is. As of Craft 3, this is a new part of default installations. And it's where you store environment-specific settings, things like database connection information, because my database connection information is going to be different locally and on staging and on production. It'll be different in each of those environments. This .env file lives solely on the environment. It is not shared across environments via the Git repository. It uses php.env, which is based on rubies.env, and it makes it easy to store environment-specific credentials. Craft's implementation of this is based on Matt Stauffer's article, Environment-Specific Configuration for Craft CMS, using php.env. And Matt gives a good rundown on how php.env works, but let's cover the basics so we're all on the same page. So basically, you have a .env or .env file in your project root. And if you've been following along up to this point, you have one as well. And using keys and values, you set environment variables. So anything you set is accessible globally via the dollar underscore env global, which you can retrieve via get env and then parentheses, and then you pass in a string for the key, which is basically the name of the variable. You can use your git ignore file, or you should use your git ignore file to ignore this file so it's not tracked in your git repository. And the git ignore file that comes with craft ignores the .env file for you automatically. php.env is a dependency of craft. It's built into the composer package that is run when you install craft. So you don't have to worry about doing anything to configure it or get it working. You only need to know that there's a .env file there that Craft created for you and how to handle it via version control, which Craft is also handling for you as well. So looking back at the .env file from our installation that we just did in the last video, you can see that we're setting our environment as dev and we can use this other places to do specific things like maybe in our general.php configuration file. This is our security key that Craft's going to use for hashing and encrypting data, and that's environment specific. Our database driver, our database server, our user, the password, the database name, the schema, of course that's only for Postgres, which we're not running, any prefix, the port, and then the last thing we have in here is the default site URL, and of course this will change environment to environment. Now, if we go in and look at in config, we have some config files. Let's go ahead and look how we can retrieve that data. So if I go in to db.php, which is the database connection configuration file, you can see it returns all of this, the driver, the server, the user, the password, the database, the schema, all that stuff we just set. But look what it does. It's just fetching them via get env, and then the name, the key, which is the name of the variable that we set. And that's all there is to it. We set it in that .env file, and then we can fetch it, read it out, and use it to dynamically set configuration variables right in our specific environment. The main thing that this means is that our database credentials and other credentials for maybe other services like API keys are not stored in a repository. They're stored only on the production server, only on the staging server, only locally, and not shared among them. So we can keep our most sensitive credentials, like for production or staging, out of our Git repository, out of the hands of people that don't need them, and really try to make our sites and our systems more secure. So that's the rundown on .env. If you want to read more about it, check out Matt's article or look through the documentation at docs.craftcms.com.